<laughs> Mind carries words, all that sin tattooed on her skin, speaks in the rhythms of breath and water, the forgetting of air. She lifts her toes from the river. In the beginning, she says, and quickly smiles at me, knowing that I am thinking of her as my biblical poet, my beautiful lotus flower, inventing beginnings out of shiny pleasure zones of life. In the beginning, she begins again. Words are physical sounds, vibrations without a path. The birthplace of words intrigues me in the same way that a, the, that a dream of a lover, a lover that will only be born through a desire for a home, haunts me. Words cause muscles to spasm with desire as they pass through my body, over my flesh, like white water over green rocks. Later, words become pictures inside dreams and thoughts. When spoken with care, when words are tended to, words become concrete moments of faith for those absent desires that have fled far up into the foothills, away from the city. Near the last of their breath, words finally made under certain light at specific times of day communicate a longing to others. But before all this, before all these beginnings that have been named, that have been scripted into biblical myth, words began as fossils. Eventually, these fossil words became rooted in the soil of our infant sons, and we have forgotten them. We live our lives forgetting and forgetting and forgetting and forgetting until we disappear in the noise without taking time to enter the silence of being near to each other's bodies. The roots of all words are little more than little more than mythological threads, a way for carrying the past into the present, to this moment, to this place, here, now. These roots travel back to their places of origin, where word was in the beginning of fossil. Repeat a word too often, mine continues, and it will leave scars in you, sacred tears that years later will fall from your eyes. Repeating words is like skinning your knees over and over on concrete. Words possess this kind of intimate and destructive power, a power to skin. Mai stopped talking. She held onto her breath and touched the very corner of her mouth. When Doug was young and still thought of himself as a girl, Father Boyle told him the story of St. Francis's tears. Words are water held by the body. Before a word is given breath, a word looks like a tear. Speaking makes words turn invisible. Once they leave the body, words become empty vessels. Tears should never be treated this way. They should never be spoken. We need to trust silence and touch. When people began transforming their tears into words and breaking silence and becoming distant from touch, lying became possible, a breach of faith. Maya says she hears echoes in my voice, echoes stained by a love that had disappeared, rivers that had become exhausted and turned dry. Maya was the one who gave birth to water and continues to live in my skin. I never understood that water has roots, is rooted, until I listened to her tell stories of her ancient home far away. Her bare feet cold and blistered on dirt floors, her tiny hands picking delicate fruit from strange trees while her grandfather fished. Even this water of the south work, always in movement, never tired, is rooted as it carves its way into the dirt of the banks along the river, trying to remember. Maya and I stand among smooth, worn rocks, rocks made round by the winter rains and the muscle of this river straining to come home. And her, the river's move. Her scent remains rooted to this movement. The following that will appear only as it begins to travel beneath shadows was originally written with a pencil, and it should be read as if it were written in pencil. Words on the verge of being erased, words written on top of words, words crossed out. Many of these words are missing. They have been rubbed onto my skin. The words that do, that, the words that do remain carry my skin from rubbing and rubbing the words onto the page. Shadows on the surface of the river became broken home. I watched Mai's hand working on the page, her shoulder muscles and her biceps making poems, making visions into words, forming desire out of words detached for only a brief moment from her breath and her skin. 
my willingness to write is so strong that she nearly writes through the paper onto the center of the earth. And my only writes with a pencil. All right.